Hello everyone, welcome to Dakshna E Classroom program. So in last lecture we talked about electromagnetic wave and uh, how Maxwell based on like few equations predicted the existence or like predicted the electromagnetic wave later on Hertz experimentally demonstrated it and we saw few more things like uh, about properties uh, in uh, electromagnetic wave it's uh, how exactly it's produced actually uh, accelerating or oscillating charge particle produces oscillating or changing electric field and changing electric field produces magnetic field and so on and they travel in the space there no medium is required and the speed of electromagnetic wave is simply equal to speed of light that's 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so that that was all about like the uh, electromagnetic wave let's see now because electromagnetic wave or em wave carries some energy so what is the energy so let's talk about its energy density and intensity okay so let's consider the wave equation of electromagnetic wave is given by e naught into sine of omega t minus kx is it or i can write it it's simply kx minus omega t similarly b var is given by b is equal to b naught into sine of kx minus omega t clear and then so these can be even rearranged in different way one more thing is there like here at some point is it if i take e is the electric field b is the magnetic field we have already studied studied that if e is the electric field then energy density is it so let consider a small volume dv then energy contained in that uh, or I will write electric energy, electric field energy in dV volume that I can write it is du is equal to 1 by 2 into epsilon naught into e square into dV and here this is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught E can be written that E naught square into sine of kx minus omega t sine square into dv. So this is the energy carried by EM wave in its electric field. Is it similarly magnetic field energy because in uh, electrostatic and magnetism we have already seen that whenever there is uh, some electric field is existing in the space means there is some energy stored in that region in the form of electric field similarly magnetic field also stores some amount of energy and the energy density in magnetic field and electric field we have already seen we have already studied so by using that relation exactly i can write energy in uh, contained in the electric field in volume dv can be expressed this way similarly magnetic field energy so that can be written as let us say d u b and d u e this will be equal to this is a b square divided by 2 mu naught multiplied by v dv right so this can be b naught square into sin square kx minus omega t divided by 2 mu naught multiplied by dv so the total energy carried by the em wave total energy carried by em wave to or total energy of em wave in volume dv so that is given by total energy du total is equal to what simply du electric plus du magnetic and that is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught e naught square sin square kx minus omega t into dv plus 1 by 2 or v naught square sin square kx minus omega t divided by 2 mu naught multiplied by dv so that is the total energy i can write du total which is carried by electromagnetic wave or em wave and then total energy density energy density 
that I can write du total divided by dv volume and that will be 1 by 2 epsilon naught e naught square sin square kx minus omega t plus b naught square sin square kx minus omega t divided by 2 mu naught. So this is energy density in electric field, this is energy density in magnetic field and this is basically u energy density small u electric and small u magnetic. So this is like instantaneous basically at any point you can or at any point and at any time you can get the energy density at that point and at that moment of time and this is electric energy field energy density and this is magnetic field energy and that we are getting total energy density so this is total energy density u can be written as simply 1 by 2 epsilon naught e naught square sin square kx minus omega t plus b naught square sin square kx minus omega t divided by 2 mu naught this now this is what instantaneous we can get average of this so the average energy density can be calculated the average energy density that i can write u average will be equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught e naught square into average of what sine square kx minus omega t similarly b naught square by 2 mu naught into average of sin square kx minus omega t because this is a constant quantity this is also constant and we know average of sin square theta uh, is equal to what it's equal to half so that means the average value of sin square theta is equal to half right over long uh, large interval so this implies u average is coming out to be epsilon naught into e naught square by 4 plus b naught square by 4 mu naught so this is the total energy density carried by em wave let's check whether like energy density in the form of electric and magnetic field it's equal or whether electric field carries more energy or magnetic field carries more energy is it so this is total energy density now I can write UB is equal to B square divided by 2 mu naught and we know one relation actually that E naught is equal to C into B naught this relation we have already seen so let me substitute it here then what I will get actually uh, I can substitute B naught is equal to what E naught square by C, E naught by C so I have substituted it here then UB is coming out to be E naught square divided by 2 mu naught into c square and we have also see c is equal to under root mu naught into epsilon naught so this implies c square is equal to what 1 by mu naught epsilon naught substituting it here u b is coming out to be e naught square divided by 2 mu naught and 1 by c square will be like mu naught into epsilon naught cancel out so u b energy density in magnetic field is coming out to be e naught square this epsilon naught into e naught square that means uh, I should have taken here 4 or 4 this is also 4 and then also here so the point here is that energy density in magnetic field is equal to energy density in electric field so means both electric and magnetic field carry equal amount of energy it's not like electric field is carrying more energy magnetic field is carrying less energy nothing like that so both electric and magnetic field carry equal amount of energy And the total energy you you can write it's equal to epsilon naught e naught square by 2 plus b naught square by 2 mu naught or I know this uh, sorry 
by 4 by 4 I know this quantity is equal to this so then if I am substituting this can be written as 1 by epsilon naught square uh, epsilon naught e naught square by 4 plus epsilon naught e naught square by 4 then it will be equal to epsilon naught e naught square by 2 or uh, that is also equal to b naught square by 2 mu naught so this is the total energy remember it one thing b naught square by 2 mu naught is total energy because we are getting it this quantity is equal to this so if i am express substituting this in terms of this then these two add it two times and you will get this you can express same total energy density in terms of electric field also then you will get this expression so but both are same thing and this is the total energy density the energy density in terms of only electric field is given by this energy density in terms of only magnetic field is given by this so like they are carrying equal amount of energy is it it's half of total average energy this is also half of average if i'm adding it then i'm getting this total energy in terms of or total energy density in terms of electric field total energy density in terms of magnetic field so this is about energy density and electromagnetic wave yes they carry energy and they carry like because you must be feeling it electric field and magnetic field means there is some energy so whenever there is in some space electric field is there means it is having some energy and how much energy it is having that we can because uh, we here calculating in terms of energy density so energy per unit volume so this these are expression and here you can write either this way this will be like energy density is it average energy density electric field and that is also equal to magnetic field total energy density in terms of electric field this total energy density in terms of magnetic field is given by this so half of like energy is carried by electric field half of energy is carried by magnetic field so this is about remember these relations and formula they are important okay so next intensity so first you should understand what is intensity intensity is basically it is energy crossing unit area perpendicularly uh, per unit area or I will write per unit area per unit time perpendicular perpendicular to its cross section that is defined as intensity so let's consider here a cylindrical volume a is the area of cross section cross section and length equal to c delta t where an electromagnetic wave is traveling is it so for delta t time em wave so in that case this length is c delta t then energy contained electromagnetic wave then energy contained in cylindrical volume that total energy can be written as basically it's 1 by 2 energy density if I am writing it's epsilon naught e naught square multiplied by volume that is C delta T multiplied by area this is volume or this is also equal to b naught square by 2 mu naught into c delta t multiplied by a now what is energy uh, intensity energy per unit crossing per unit area per unit time so it's crossing basically in delta t time then i can write intensity i is equal to u divided by c uh, u divided by delta t into a and that will be equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught e naught square into c or that is also equal to b square b naught square divided by 2 mu naught into c so that is energy density energy density carried by em wave okay so this is uh, all about these are few things next comes like electromagnetic uh, or a spectrum of electromagnetic wave so there are many type of wave gamma ray x rays initially originally long time back only visible light was known but later on like in 19th century beginning x-rays were discovered similarly gamma ray and uh, 
a UV rays and radio wave. All those waves were discovered in the late, some in late 19th century or some in the uh, beginning of 19th, uh, sorry, some in uh, like beginning of uh, 20th century or some in the end of 19th century. So after that now we have complete spectrum of electromagnetic wave and different types of wave have different properties and their applications. So that is a completely theoretical path. You go through it from any of the like uh, book material available for you. Just read through, read it and try to remember those things before exam because sometimes in exam some like uh, maybe in mains some like things are questions are asked memory based questions can be asked based on that so try to just read them before the exam or maybe like for board exam also i will still like uh, just uh, discuss things in short like the type of wave production and all that actually so let me write just it's like uh, more of remembering things nothing much to understand but uh, this is all about basically electromagnetic wave okay so electromagnetic spectrum spectrum basically it's a arrangement of all the em waves based on increasing frequency or increasing wavelength basically so here are uh, like uh, different types of em waves available right now or all has been discovered i told initially there was only visible light or visible em waves were available but later on like x-ray we just studied actually in chapter last chapter that uh, how it got discovered or how Trontizen actually discovered similarly like other waves were discovered so now we have like gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet uv rays visible we know very well and infrared microwave and radio so here the, these are like the order of increasing frequency so gamma rays is having maximum frequency means maximum energy lower than that it's x-ray and still if you go lower frequency then it's uv and visible rate radio wave have minimum frequency but if we go for wavelength then radio wave have largest wavelength that to like from three it can have three to ten so four meter of wavelength so the range uh, it's given like more than 0 0.1 meter all like are comes in radio wave similarly 0.1 to 1 mm wavelength uh, of wave comes into microwave actually so they have like different uh, types of wave based on their frequency and wavelength and complete uh, uh, collectively we call this as electromagnetic spectrum and their production if you want to like uh, for some like application they have proper production mechanisms so, like it is produced by accelerating motion of electrons such as in wires we can produce radio wave used for radio and tv and even communication systems actually like uh, in cellular phones also like uh, signal voice and all those is transmitted is it wireless and through these radio waves and receivers aerial we can detect actually radio waves so similarly microwave they have range of wavelength special vacuum tubes are there to produce microwave actually those vacuum tube names are clistron and magnetron and gun diode these are some special vacuum tubes which are used for production of microwave radar system aircraft navigation microwave oven everyone is familiar in these these are some application of microwave similarly like point contact diode is a detector basically for detecting microwave so exactly in same manner there is a proper range of uh, wavelength for every like radio micro infrared visible it's from seven uh, like 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer similarly alpha uh, uv x-ray and gamma ray so what you do is just like it's available it's just simple theoretical just read through it read it and try to remember a few things before exam basically because in board and like in main some like are data based or some like memory based questions can be asked based on these things so you go through all these like different types of wave and their range and the, how they are produced their application and detection so this is uh, all about theoretically for EM wave. Let me solve some problems that type of like uh, which is asked in exams, different types of problems. So I hope uh, that will all like make sense. Here, not much uh, to read. Like this, this part, this part you read from either book. Like uh, you, you may go for NCRT. It's available there. So let's see next some problem based on it. Okay, let's see some problem based on it. So, if uh, magnetic, magnetic field of plane EM wave is given by this, then maximum electric field associated with it. So, maximum electric field means it's simply talking about the magnitude or amplitude of electric field. So, we know actually here 
magnitude of magnetic field is given then magnitude of electric field is equal to c times magnitude of magnetic field so we can easily write c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 multiplied by b naught is 100 into 10 to the power minus 6 and solving it we are getting e naught is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 100 into power 4 volt meter so this is the magnitude of our maximum electric field associated with the wave is given by this that simple application the mean intensity of radiation on the surface of sun is about this watt per meter square okay mean intensity it's saying the rms value of corresponding magnetic field so we know uh, actually like a mean intensity all right so we can write mean intensity is equal to what i mean is equal to in terms of we can write b naught square by 2 mu naught into c right and this is given as 10 raised to power 8 watt per meter square so b naught we are asked actually the corresponding magnetic field is equal to so we just need to simplify it this implies b naught is equal to this is 10 raised to power 8 multiplied by 2 mu naught divided by c and under root this is it so that we can simplify actually here b naught is equal to its under root 10 to the power 8 multiplied by 2 into mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 divided by this is 3 into 10 to the power 8 this cancelled out simply and uh, this is uh, 8 pi by 3 into 10 to the power minus 7 under root this so which can be further simplified this is uh, magnitude of magnetic field so we can use it use it uh, like simple formula application and that is the answer you can further simplify it based on requirement okay let's see next one magnetic uh, field of plane em wave is given by this expression so here you can see there are two magnetic field actually b1 one along i cap another along j cap and wave is traveling in k cap actually so definitely there will be corresponding two so you can say it's like superposition of two em wave one is propagating in positive z direction, another in negative z direction. Right? Where b naught and b one values are given, the magnitude of force experienced by stationary charge. So stationary charge. It's remembering that stationary charge means b cannot apply apply force on a stationary charge. Only electric field can apply. So we just need to calculate electric field. So e one will be equal to what magnitude c into b naught, and remember that it's i. It's traveling in z direction so it, this will be like uh, magnetic fields are perpendicular so corresponding electric field will be also perpendicular e1 and e2 so it will be c into b1 that will be like uh, 3 9 into 10 to the power 3 volt meter and this will be like 6 into 10 to the power 2 volt meter so net electric field will be like because force experienced is equal to what f is equal to q into e net simple and q we already know so e net we can get its under root e1 square plus e2 square and this implies force is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 multiplied by this under root 9 into 10 to the power 2 square plus uh, this is a uh, 6 power 3 6 into 10 to the power 2 whole square e1 square into e2 square multiplied by q so that can be further simplified here it's like uh, f is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 and from here i can take actually like uh, uh, k okay 10 to the power 3 i can take out then 10 to the power, 10 to the power 3 and this will be like 81 plus it's 0 0.36 so it will be roughly like uh, because I have written it 0 0.6 into 10 to the power 3 so that 10 to the power 3 taken out 81 and 0 0.36 I am just ignoring that it will be roughly 9 then it's coming out to be 4 is equal to, 4 is equal to 0 point, uh, 0.4 multiplied by like this is simply what 10 to the power minus 1 into some 9 point something and the force it will be 0 0.9 Newton roughly 
So that is how we can solve this problem. Let's see few more cases. Okay, so here electric field of a plane EM wave is given by this, then corresponding magnetic field B is asked to you. So let's see. So first thing is magnitude of electric field it's E naught, and we know the relation that uh, B is equal to what E naught by C. So magnitude of B naught will be like simply this. So we are getting B naught is equal to simply E naught by C. And here E is given as E naught I cap cos Kz cos omega t. Clear? Okay, first thing is it's not like seems to be a standard uh, uh, wave equation for electric field or like any wave equation. We can rearrange it by using some trigonometric identities that can be written as E naught by 2 I cap and this can be written as cos of Kz minus omega t minus cos of kz plus omega t so effectively it's coming out to be superposition of two electric fields so e is equal to e naught by 2 this is a cos of kz minus omega t i cap minus cos of kz plus omega t i cap so it's basically two electric fields are there one it's propagating in positive z direction another propagating in negative z direction the direction of uh, this electric field is in positive plus i cap and this component of electric field is in minus i cap so now let's calculate corresponding magnetic field so magnitude we already got magnetic field this e naught by c so then i can write b corresponding magnetic field corresponding magnetic field b so b what can be write about b so magnitude of b is equal to what first magnitude is e naught by c this is the magnitude remember direction of this electric field is it i cap and it's propagating in k cap is it so see it x y z and this is i cap and uh, wave is propagating in this direction and electric field is in this direction then in which direction magnetic field should be so we know e cross b c bar should be parallel to e bar cross b bar right so when like we can say i cross j then only it can come k so then magnetic this b one i will write should be along what plus uh this is uh, j cap so this will be like e naught and it will be equal to what cos of kz minus omega t into plus j cap right next magnetic field magnetic magnitude will be like you can write uh, cos of kz plus omega t and this will be like also i can write if i write it separately this j cap then this will also e naught by c and cos of kz plus omega t so the point is this magnetic field is propagating in negative z direction negative z direction and uh, electric field here this component is in minus i so another electric field component is in this e2 i will write and this is the direction of propagation basically c bar then in which direction we should have like next component of magnetic field so again e cross c e cross b it cannot give but if i write e cross b is it e cross b if uh, if uh, like this uh, magnetic field is in still positive y direction then you can see e cross b positive y can give you negative z direction so that means it should be plus j cap so this will be then i am getting b is coming out to be e naught by c and this is cos of kz minus omega t j cap plus cos of kz plus omega t also j cap right this is also your answer if options are given in this form but actually like in this case in exam options were not given in this form so this can be rearranged actually like so cos here we can use cos c cos d uh, c plus cos d formula and i can write it basically 
or you can even cos by c you can either write cos alpha minus beta then cos alpha cos beta plus sin alpha sin beta remember it cos alpha cos beta plus sin alpha sin beta and here it will be cos alpha cos beta and uh, it will be like uh, minus is it sin alpha uh, just wait a second here we have all right it's uh, okay just wait a second uh, there is just one small error so this uh, like uh, when we are expanding it it will be actually coming here plus so cos kz cos omega t minus sin kz sin omega t and here cos kz cos omega t it will be like uh, so minus here it will be plus and here it will be minus so sin sin component will cancel out then we will get exactly this so it should be plus here then it should be plus here also and if it is coming plus here so then this part is okay we got it up to here now see it's in plus i cap so electric field uh, is uh, still in plus i cap electric field is still in this direction but it's this time propagating in negative z direction so the direction so then it should be basically in minus j cap so it should be minus j cap then we are getting it this now simplifying it so it will be like cos now it's correct so it will be like okay let me write it even cos kz cos omega t minus sin kz sin omega t both j cap complete and this will be like minus cos kz cos omega t and it will be like minus minus will become plus sin kz sin omega t complete j cap now you can see this component is cancelling out and uh, it will be also plus so this these two will be added and finally we are getting b is equal to e naught by c into this is sign of kz uh, just one second e naught by 2 will be also there in this form 2c it's 2c 2c and 2c and here it will be having like 2 sin kz sin omega t this cancelled out and b bar is equal to e naught by two, e naught by c into sine of kz sine of omega t j cap let me just uh, explain it again simple thing so for this is originally given i and electric field when we are writing it expanding then it we will get this actually i did small error here when the minus sign i missed so this are uh, like you can understand how we are getting it here now we have like electric field two component both are in i direction positive i direction but this is propagating in positive z direction this is propagating in negative z direction so because of that the component of this is simply electric field magnetic field component magnitude is simply given by this but because electric uh, electric field are in same direction but propagation of wave is in opposite direction or in different directions so that's why magnetic field will have different directions so one is having positive j cap another is having minus j cap so we are getting finally this expression now simplifying it basically then we are getting this and 2 2 gets cancelled and this is your final answer so that will be the final magnetic field corresponding to this wave i hope you understood this part okay see few more problem here so we have one question a light wave is incident normally on a glass slab of refractive index so this is let's say a glass slab and light wave is incident so this is a uh, we can write air medium and this is glass slab incident normally refractive index here n is given as 1.5 and 4% of the light is getting reflected so reflected light is only 4% so means it's 100% then passing is 96% 96% is light is passing out entering into the glass slab and uh, amplitude of electric field of incident wave is 30 volt per meter then amplitude of electric field for the wave propagating in the glass medium is asked to find so let's calculate so first thing is uh, we know 
c is equal to 1 by under root mu naught into epsilon naught and the wave uh, speed in the medium is given by 1 by mu naught into epsilon medium okay so now if i simply divide it then c by v it will come out simply under root epsilon by epsilon naught and this is equal to refractive index n right another point intensity of incident wave i can write it's 1 by 2 epsilon naught into e naught i am considering the e naught is let's suppose incident wave so e naught is the magnitude of incident wave multiplied by c square then intensity of uh, like uh, wave in the glass medium can be written as 1 by 2 into epsilon glass into e glass square multiplied by v in glass simple thing right and here see incident 100 percent so 4 percent reflected means what is this actually so this you can write it's uh, actually 96 percent of incident so i am simply like i glass divided by i incident this is what 0 0.96 and this comes out to be simply 1 i glass 1 by 2 epsilon into e square into v divided by 1 by 2 into epsilon onto e naught square into c so half cancel simply and uh, point i need basically so this implies epsilon by epsilon naught square will be equal to what this can be written as epsilon by epsilon it's a c square by v square into e square by e naught square multiplied by uh, this is v by c so gates cancel and this is c by v is equal to what n right so this implies i need actually e so e square by e naught square is equal to 0 0.96 divided by 1.5 and e is equal to 0 0.96 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 30 into 30 and under root this and solving it we get actually this is a uh, under root 576 that is 24 volt meter so this is the magnitude of uh, electric field in the glass medium this is how we approached see we know the relation speed of uh, em wave in this medium is written this way writing it exactly says dividing we are getting incident intensity intensity entering into the glass medium and it spans at 96 percent of incident so we just divided and simplified epsilon by epsilon naught can be written as n from here and then it's base also equal to c by v whole square so just simplifying it this and solving substituting the value we are getting this so here is also we have another problem that's almost similar let's see it also so em wave of intensity so here intensity is given i is 50 watt meter square enter in a medium of refractive index n so it's let's say medium one medium two it's entering into a medium of refractive index n without any loss so 100 percent energy is getting transmitted ratio of magnitude of electric field so this is let's say e1 and this is e2 this is b1 and this is b2 so ratio of magnitude of electric field and magnitude of magnetic field of the wave before so means it's asking basically e1 by e2 and b1 by b2 this is what it is asking remember that here there is no loss is taking place so means 100 percent energy is getting transmitted so again here also we can write uh, let's say i am taking the speed in this medium is c and the speed in this medium is v i am taking this medium is my air okay so now in this case again c is equal to 1 by under root mu naught epsilon naught and v is equal to 1 by under root mu naught into epsilon so this implies c by v is equal to under root epsilon by epsilon naught and that is also equal to refractive index okay so here e1 means incident actually so i can write i1 is equal to what 1 by 2 
epsilon naught e1 square into c and i2 is equal to what it's equal to basically 1 by 2 epsilon into e2 square into v and it's given basically no energy is getting lost so means i can write these two quantities would be equal right as no energy loss is taking place this implies i1 should be equal to i2 and then i can simplify it just one second okay so we got it up to here then simplifying it 1 by 2 epsilon into e1 square into c equal to 1 by 2 epsilon into e2 square into v half gets cancelled we need e1 by e2 so e1 by e2 let's say whole square this is coming out to be v by c multiplied by this is a uh, epsilon by epsilon naught and epsilon by epsilon naught uh, is i can write c by v whole square so this is equal to v by c multiplied by c square by v square and this comes out to be c by v and that is equal to n right so this implies i am getting e1 by e2 is equal to under root n let me just check the calculation even epsilon naught even square it's like a magnitude ratio of magnitude of electric field and ratio of magnitude of magnetic field of the wave before and after so before and after it's all right so we are getting we need this so just checking the calculation c we got and v we got this and c by v so c by v yes it will be epsilon by epsilon naught and that is also basically c by v is also written as refractive index and so here even uh, right v by c and epsilon by epsilon naught and epsilon by epsilon naught then we will get c square by v square once it gets cancelled c by v and we are getting n so similarly we can write actually things for magnetic field so for magnetic field ratio okay so i can write again i1 is equal to b naught square or i will write b1 by 2 mu naught into c i2 is equal to b2 square into v divided by 2 mu naught and again i1 must be equal to i2 and this implies b1 square by 2 mu naught into c should be equal to b2 square by 2 mu naught into v this gets cancelled and this implies b1 by b2 whole square is equal to this is what v by c and what is v by c that is equal to 1 by n so this implies b1 by b2 is equal to 1 by under root n so this is your problem i hope you understood so this is these are some problem about em wave you try more problems from some book and uh, i hope you like understood you try just more problem then you will feel more confident this is all about em wave let's see you in the next class with new topic new topic thank you so much